Critics call it a stain on America's reputation. Backers say it's an ideal place to jail the worst of the worst. The Guantanamo Bay Detention Facility is one of the enduring legacies of 9-11, a Spartan prison in a forbidding corner of Cuba on a U.S. military base outside the reach of American civilian courts because it's not on U.S. soil. Nearly two decades after the September 11th attacks, the military prison known as Gitmo is much changed from when it first opened in 2002. It once held nearly 700 prisoners, but is now down to 39. It was once a place where torture was common, but those techniques are now illegal. To win the war on terror, we must be able to detain, question, and when appropriate, prosecute terrorists captured here in America and on the battlefields around the world. President Bush opened the detention center as he launched what he called the War on Terror, with the idea of keeping so-called enemy combatants there indefinitely. He filled it up, mixing low-level foot soldiers with terrorist masterminds, all held without charge. Stop the torture! Amid worldwide condemnation, his administration ended up releasing 500 captives and granting the remaining prisoners access to lawyers. President Obama promised to close the prison, but failed, though he shrank the population further. President Trump pledged to load it up with new inmates, but never did. Stung by revelations of torture, the CIA and the military long ago stopped holding enemy combatants for more than a few days. The U.S. instead has relied on allies to jail those captured on the battlefield. It became easier to kill terror suspects with drone strikes than for America to capture and hold them. President Biden says he intends to finally shutter Guantanamo, but no one has figured out what to do with the last of the hardcore Al-Qaeda prisoners. 27 of the remaining 39 inmates have not even been charged. Those who have been charged have spent countless days inside a courtroom adjacent to prison. This week, hearings have resumed there in the military trial of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and four others accused of helping to murder 3,000 Americans on 9-11. They face the death penalty. I have no doubt whatsoever that KSM is guilty. I, and, and he's admitted it himself over and over again. Um, so this should have been a, a very straightforward, you know, open and shut case. Have you been to Guantanamo? To the, you, you've seen the, the situation. The whole thing is just is ridiculous. The trial has proceeded at a snail's pace since 2012. After pandemic delays, lawyers this week are resuming arguments over pretrial motions, including the key question of whether a jury should hear FBI interviews with defendants after they were tortured by the CIA, or whether that torture tainted all their subsequent statements. It could be years before the case comes before a jury. Many wonder whether it's even possible to have a fair trial two decades after the crimes. But the prospect of releasing some of these men is unacceptable to U.S. national security officials. As a reminder of the costs, two extremists once imprisoned at Guantanamo have surfaced in Afghanistan as key figures in the new Taliban government. Two decades after it opened, historians still ponder the question of whether the compromise Guantanamo demanded of American values outweighed whatever benefits it produced for national security. The other big question, whether the prison will ever be closed or whether the last of the hard cases will die there, never having been charged. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.